Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're in the Umbral Armory shop actually. We're getting this AK completely modded out. I'm curious what you can do. This is my first AK, so let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm attempting to set up some kind of time lapse for you guys with my GoPro, so we'll see how, so we'll see how that works. Um, in the meantime, we're trying to find kind of different batteries for, because AKs have a lot of uh, lack of battery space, because the batteries go on the top like that. We're also going to have to rewire the uh, Tamiya to Dean's as well, because I only have all uh, Dean's batteries. Like this one uh, is my battery and we're hoping this will fit. I believe this is like the biggest it'll fit. Um, I might need to buy some new batteries for an AK though. But ones like this that'll easily fit into a buffer tube actually won't fit into AKs because of the um, the lack of space on the top. You need a really like slim long battery. <laughs> <laughs> These screws in this gun are insane. It just broke two different tools trying to get the uh, trying to get the screws out. Uh, oh my dude. gosh. <laughs> you could probably yeah. see. all that glue in there. Yeah. We're trying to so we're trying to get this flash header off so I can put a tracer unit on it. But yeah, so we took off this whole front part, but then now we need to get the actual threads back on so we can put a tracer unit on there so we can use it. But <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Another journey. Weird thing about this thing is we have to push this down at the same time as turning this. Hmm. However, we do not know which way this turns. Ah. Uh, so. And it's loctited. And it's loctited. So gotcha. we have to do this all while it's extremely hot. Yeah. I used to use a hair dryer when I was teching. I used to take my mom's hair dryer and just blast it for five minutes and then just rip it off. Physics kids, this is called leverage. <laughs> That's why he's using the screwdriver to turn it instead of his hand because it's way easier. <laughs> so the yeah. differences between the version two and the version three are on the version two, you're gonna have like uh, the pin most of the time that you're gonna punch out and then the back, uh, the back pin, like the trigger pin and the back pin on mm -hmm. that. And then once you get those out and once you have your uh, motor grip unscrewed, you can pull the you know, the whole gearbox out. Gotcha. The difference with the version three is that it's gonna be, the selector actually goes and sits into the gearbox, so that's mm -hmm. one point. Uh, there's no uh, stock connection here. There's a motor grip situation here, but it's typically on a motor cage. So it's oh, that's a right. Yeah, different. V3s have motor cages. Exactly. I forgot so what this will the actual grip will slide onto here, and then there'll be a cage that that connects mm, onto the shit. gearbox. And then this one right here is how you can basically take on and off the, uh, the gotcha. actual. Does the surefire come with the? And that's how that whole mechanism is. That's why it's really easy to get new AK grips because yeah. you're literally gonna undo that one screw. You don't have yeah. to mess up with just slide any right of the off, actual yeah. motor adjustment or anything. Just slide nice. So yeah, uh, reiterating on the points of contact, we have uh, this right here basically is holding the motor cage in onto the gearbox and then you would uh, basically use this. It would hold that in with torsion by pulling this closer out and this up against this. And then you also have a selector plate and then the whole front assembly basically locks the hop up in. <laughs> Hold on, don't move, don't move. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, there and we go. Silicone, nice. <laughs> right, and this thing's gonna sit here. Go buy your mats, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's heat proof. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. Like, I watched a whole season of one series. Nice. How many seasons? <laughs> Oh, they're the eight, they're the ones. Um, what you do because you need to have this in here when you assemble the gearbox, mm -hmm. you cut a little here, notch in this so side or in this side, so that over. after the gearbox is assembled, you can just put this all right together here. without worrying about this. Oh, okay. Because so you you'll back. always forget it. Yeah, yeah. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten times. <laughs> this piece I feel like is like heavier than some guns you guys make. Like it's so like full metal. Dude. Yeah. Most uh, gearboxes don't have this. this. Is like definitely an LCT thing. Mm. It has a little. Grub screw there that'll lock in this post so that it doesn't give you a lot of the side fumbling. A lot of other gearboxes they'll literally not have that, so this thing will just move back and forth. Huh. This thing like eliminates all that side nice. fumbling, keeps it locked in there. Such a small part, such a big detail. Such a big difference, yeah. Such a big difference. L C D, good job. Touch it with this. So we got this. We've officially taken it out. This is what an AK lower looks like. How fascinating, right? <laughs> so just a piece of metal with a stock. Piece of metal, somebody <laughs> folded three times.
Nine. Three meter bearings. So that's cool. We'll hold on to that. Hold on to so those that. are strong, basically. If it's nine millimeter, it's good. Yeah. So in a gearbox, you have the electronics, the trigger, and also the sector gear, the spur gear, and then the bevel gear. Actually goes on the bottom right here. And then the motor has something on the top called the pinion gear, which contacts with the bevel gear, and then that's how they all spin. And then this is the compression system where the sector gear, when all the gears are going, it pulls back with the teeth. This little, it's called a piston. It pulls back with these teeth, and then as this goes back and releases, it creates compression in the cylinder, and then that's why the nozzle moves and has air come out the top, and then the BB, or sorry, air comes out the end, and then the BB goes through the barrel, basically. So you're looking to take off those edges. You don't want to do a lot of damage on the outside. You're not looking to do these big old giant, like, you know. You're not looking for these to go down. Yeah. You're looking more for 75% of the movement to go that way, 25 of it to go down, and ultimately just taking off these sharp corners. That's going to make it so that all the pressure that's being felt on the cylinder head and on the little bit that does get transferred to the cylinder, mm. everything gets balanced on this as opposed to these hot points. Here's a really top tier premium gear, you know? And you're just gonna throw them in. <laughs> so he was checking the motor strength by connecting it to metal because the, the stronger the magnets are, when it connects to metal, the strong the better the motor is usually. Oh, you can hear a pop. When you add this thing, it just amplifies it on so many different levels. So. Alright guys, so a little update for you guys. So we've gotten out the gearbox, we've chosen to do a uh, 40k motor for high speed and also a 18-1 to um, SHS slash rocket um, gear set. So, so far that's what we're going to do. I'll update you guys as soon as I know about the um, compression setup and as well as some other things too. So if you think about each gear by itself, you want to think about it like this. Each gear by itself is like this. You're spinning it, you see there's still, this is where I start. Spur down, it's still spinning a little bit. I can hear that there's a little bit of like something that it's running into. Obviously this is not the best test bed because I can get rid of that by doing this and spinning it because then the access of it is corrected. Still making noise, not good. Um, Slide that on, on there. So now I'm at point three on bottom, and this is usually where I'm at most of the time. Point three is always going to give me a really decent sounding situation. He's adding these little metal shims to each one of the gears on the top or bottom to make all the gears basically mesh together. And then at the end of the day, when the motor, the pinion on the the motor comes in contact with the bevel and it starts going with compression, everything's smooth. It sounds better. It's better efficiency. All, like everything's better basically. Yeah, there's no rubbing where yeah. stuff shouldn't be rubbing essentially. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah. So, essentially you do this to each gear. So you do it to this gear, then you do it to this gear, then you do it to this gear. Then you put all these gears in here and you would double check and make sure that you have enough clearance in between these. So this is kind of where you would do this other. If you look at the right angle, you could see the edge of this gear and the top edge of this gear, and they appear to be just a tiny bit too close. Gotcha. Even if you have like the yeah. the top of the gearbox on, you'll see. Because it'll start to rub, yeah. like the, the services access, will start to rub. Exactly, even with the access correct. You can correct it by doing one or two things. Stuff like that, yeah. like uh, you you can correct it, it by it adding shims to yeah. one side or the other while still checking and make sure that the walls are going to be okay guns, and, guns, and so on and so forth. Coming. Or you then can. There are people that do that. Um, they use. Um, Big suppressors, right? But then because you can uh, have balance, just right? rebalance this off, really by up. having use, your pinion go a little further in and oh, have it compensated it. by losing the amount of shims that you have here to give this more room to breathe here. But that's where it becomes a sketchy situation where you do it in between here and here. It all becomes the art of balancing. Once you get the art of balancing down, then you pretty much have it down. Yeah, so he took a Dremel and he, he took off three different teeth from the sector gear. It's called short stroking and that... Four altogether. Four, okay. And then what does that like help with the gearbox? That helps with um, cycling it faster, gotcha. avoiding PME on faster gearboxes. Um, so that your... Basically your piston is not going to get caught up again before it's like... Basically this is a visual representation of PME. You have a sector gear, it's engaged in the piston, it's pulling back. What happens is... That's the last tooth that'll let it go. Mm -hmm. PME is what happens when instead of it going all the way forward, getting back to its resting position and being mm -hmm. picked up again, it's getting picked up about gotcha. right here. Gotcha. And then PME for people that don't know. 
is premature engagement. Gotcha. Sweet. So then what happens is terrible. What happens here? Literally, is like, yeah. it's just it's, all bad. Yeah. It's all bad. Everything. It also teeth makes gonna it suck your teeth. Yeah. It, uh, it decreases FPS. Yeah, you so you add a bigger spring. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Drop it in, kind of spread it with the edge of it. Drop it on the edge. Put it in. Nice. Wonderful. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. Okay, so a customer just brought in a gun. I gotta show you. It's pretty sick. You got major scope on the sub boy. I like how so the, that, that one hurts a lot. This? Yeah. In this format, like you get hit by it. And I wish we were able to confirm that you see these BBs so fucking far. If you're standing, stand where I'm standing right now. Because you can see the BBs load in there. When you're when you're firing it, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. so I'm full auto. So that moving, nozzle's dude. going back. You know, there's a spring here that's pressing the BBs upwards. The nozzle goes forward, seats it with the buck, the rubber bucking, creates an air seal. Let's go with the piston. That's all happening within fractions of a second. It's just kind of cool to think about. Okay, what's up guys? So there's a little change of plans. The gate titan we were actually using in the AK build at Umbrella was actually not working and it took a while for us to kind of find a new one. All the stores were out of stock. Um, everyone we knew didn't really have one, so we finally got one. And uh, a few weeks later, we have the gun now and uh, some more goodies for the gun to unbox too, so let's do that. Okay, so first things first, uh, I already actually unboxed this one because it's a battery. Um, so I'm charging it right now. It's a... Uh, uh, yeah. Best unboxer on YouTube, no cap. Anyway, yeah, so basically it's a battery. It's a Titan battery. Um, it's kind of like a longer stick type for the AK. I'm pretty sure it'll work. Um, we'll use that in a sec when it's done charging to do a shooting test for the AK. Um, check rate of fire, trigger response, all the good stuff. But uh, yeah, that's that box. And then I'll unbox this for you guys right now. All right, so I just unboxed it so you guys don't have to see that. Um, this is actually from Bauhauk Airsoft because um, they did have something I needed in stock. Um, the tech rec recommended me um, to get PTS mags, um, and I got some other cool stuff for the AKT, like a PTS grip. Um, there's something else in here I forget too. It might be this. I'm not sure what that is. What let me say. Um, but yeah, we got three PTS um, AK mags. I think they hold 160, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is the only place online I could find that actually had the PTS um, mags in stock, and my buddy told me these were the um, better mags for just kind of like overall quality. And they weren't too expensive. And then we also got a few more. So we got three total. I uh, should be kind of enough for games. I don't really have an AK loading tool for my Odin, I think. So I'm not sure I'm going to load these. Um, yeah, anyway. But last but not least, I think... Oh, this is just a uh, FCU battery for my MP7. Because um, when I was taking it out last time, I kind of stripped the, um, the battery off. And it's a little bit um, kind of puffy. So I wanted to get a new one. Um, so yeah. Okay, last but certainly not least, we have the Umbrella Armory AK build. 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna unbox this for you guys and we'll do a little test shoot and kind of check it out. Nice. Right, so yeah, it's an LCT AK. What's up, Will? Shout out to Will. Um, here it is. It does come with an AK Mag 2. I actually forgot that too. So I think we have four mags total. So I think that should be fine for like most gameplays. Um, I'll be using this. I'll try to be using this kind of more outdoor because um, of the lack of, you can't really put a tracer on it. I could put a flashlight on there to kind of you know, trace the BBs, which I might end up doing anyway. But um, I like tracers indoors, so it might, this might be like more of an outdoor gun. Uh, it is shooting 350 FPS, so I can play indoors with it. And it's shooting around, I think, 30 RPS, so it's a pretty solid limit. Not too over or not too low, just a good amount. All right, so we got the AK out of the box. Looks very nice, feels very sturdy. Um, PTS mags are a little tight, but I think they feed. I'm not sure, we'll test it out right now. And then we're using a um, yeah, battery that's stick type. Again, um, let's see if it fits. Just if you didn't know, because I'm more of an M4 person too, um, there's actually a little kind of like screw that goes in here, obviously on the other side, and then you kind of take it out and this slides right off, and that's actually how you access the AK um, battery compartment. M4s are usually in the back, and I think some AK companies have it in the back, or some people convert them to the back to have more battery space, that's why I went with this long battery, because it can kind of fit in here, I'm not really sure if it'll fit, but let's hope it will. Okay, so I just hooked up the battery. I just got the battery and I've been charging it for maybe 10 minutes. So I'm not really sure what percent the battery's at. So this is obviously not the full capability of the gun, but this is auto. I think it's around 30 RPS, according to the tech. Uh, sounds very good, the shimming sounds really good. Let's turn that to semi. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that shimming is great. Sounds very good. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go fill this up with some BBs and then we'll shoot this uh, this here box. And don't worry, I took out the lipo stuff, so that's why it has that weird caution thing on it, but I took it out, so we're all good. Okay, due to some complications, I'm not sure if this battery actually fits or if I'm just not used to AKs yet, but I'm not sure if it fits. Um, and then the PTS mags are having some trouble feeding um, or fitting in the gun, so I'm just going to use the stock mag. But here we go for the first shooting test. But I just load up some more. Let's shoot it again. I think the mag's having some issues feeding. That's why I got the PTS mags, but they're not really fitting well, so I'm not sure what to do. But let's try some full auto. The shimming sounds very good too, especially when BBs are loaded up. And here's some auto as well. Once I get better mags and a, I guess maybe even a new battery, I'll have a full gameplay of this gun. Um, yeah, so you guys will see that soon. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, some more cool build series videos, maybe I can do some gas guns, some pistols, we'll see. Go in the comments below and tell me what you want to see. And if you guys like the video, make sure to leave a like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications to stay updated when I post. See you guys in the next one.